On this episode of Pedalbox, we're finally starting to rebuild the Thunderbird, hanging the bumper brackets that we've painted and a couple of bits we've had to remake from scratch. Yeah, and we're finally refitting those brake calipers that I refurbished late last year. So before we put the Thunderbird back together, we're going to make all of the brackets look a lot better. We're going to take all of this loose rust off. And there's a couple more bits that we need to address beyond that, because these two pieces should be mirror images of one another. And as you can see, this one is missing a lot. So I'm going to try and replicate one of these from scratch in the sheet metal that we've got, which is going to be an interesting thing to try and do. And the last thing that I might be able to salvage, but I don't think I will, is this. Now, you might think that looks okay, it's nice and straight. Well, it's straight in that axis anyway, and this was completely folded up from where the cars obviously had some sort of impact at the front. Uh, and when I straightened it all back out, it was still fairly wavy. So this needs to be straightened properly, either by expanding along these two shorter edges and just tapping it to lengthen it out, or, once again, this might need completely making from scratch. So we'll see where we get to on those, but before that, I'm going to show you how I cleaned up some of these, because I have done a set of these ones already, and there's a lot of other bits that have been painted too. So making a start on these, we need to clean off some of the loose rust and get whatever we can off without using the drill attachment or the grinding attachment to clean this down, because that will launch everything everywhere. So the more we can get off now, the better. All I'm using here is a fairly firm steel wire brush. This is quite a fine one to get into all of the edges, but you can get them in much bigger, coarser versions, and you can get the bronze wire ones, which are much, much softer. But to get rid of this, you really need the heavier duty one, albeit in a relatively small size, so you can get into all of the, the inner corners a bit easier. Now just a quick going over, very lightly with this brush, I could have spent a lot more time on it, but this is everything that came off and all of that would have just been launched into the air. And you really want to be wearing a mask when you're doing this, even just by hand, but especially if you're using a drill attachment, be it on a hand drill or on a pillar drill. Now what I've mounted in the drill here is actually an angle grinder wheel, but I choose not to use it in the angle grinder because I've had too many of these pieces launch off very, very early on in their use, and I've had them embed in my leg sort of half an inch deep, which isn't really that pleasant. Uh, now what I've done with these is put an M12 bolt through, and then a nut on the top and clamped it down really nice and tight, and then it fits well into the drill, it holds well, and because it's running at a slower speed, it doesn't launch the pieces of the, uh, the, of the wheel, the pieces of wire, or the dust anywhere near as hard. So it's, it's a lot better for the atmosphere, but you should always open the door when you're doing it, which is what I've done here. Now you can also use a hand drill, but these aren't set up as well for lateral load on the bearing, so they do wear out a lot faster. Pillar drills do have a little bit more bracing in the collars because you do get um, sort of drum sanders that fit into these, so they do hold up reasonably well. But if you're using a hand drill, even a, a mains one, you can still wear the bearings out reasonably quickly doing that, so it's worth bearing in mind. There are other ways to do it. Obviously, you can get bench top ones that hold them, hold the, uh, the wheels like this, but they have usually much the same problem as the angle grinder. The very high speeds tend to launch them, and then it's right up against you, and it's coming up out the top, and there's not always as much guard on the very top, because that's normally where you lay the work into. So it's taken me about an hour all told to get through this, and the mess was pretty bad still, even giving these a rub down beforehand, not launching it around the garage, but it could have been a lot worse. And they're looking a lot better. Um, we've also wiped over this with some phosphoric acid, which we've used before on the bonnet and various other bits where you've seen, and that's really taken off a lot of the stuff that was in the pits that we can't really clean out that well. And where it's gone down to bare metal, on this one in particular, you can see it's starting to leave the protective coating behind where it's reacted, and you get this sort of very light uh, oxidized layer that's not rust over the material, and that uh, prevents it from rusting, from flash rusting, which is really, really useful. 
Now, when we fit these splash shields before, there was one thing that was missing, and that was all of the rubber seals that go around the edge of the splash shield and fit up against the inside of the wing and parts of the body. Unfortunately, what hasn't arrived, or what doesn't even seem to exist, even in my big thick manual, is a pattern of where each one fits. So this is going to be a bit of trial and error to work out where they go. Now, Ford here, I think they came up with a fairly clever solution to a fairly stupid problem. Um, the basic issue was that these panels don't fit perfectly up against the wings, and rather than try to make everything so that they fit together right every time, they just kind of go, yeah, screw it, we'll just put some rubber in. So you've got these rubber flanges that sit all around the outside, and they're held on out of the factory with staples that you can see in one of our close-ups that we're taking. But because we don't have a massive, great big stapling machine like Ford do, we've used uh, steel wire, which is just like twist tied in place and holds it all on. And in fairness, it feels pretty robust. These should hold in place quite well, I think. So we're going to pop this one up on the car, and when once the wing fits over it, it should seal down up against the inside of the wing. Now, the rear one is roughly the same idea, and it is a removable piece. We could take it off and bring it into the garage and work on it the same we did the front. The only problem is it just kind of feels like a bit of a pain to get into, like it's bolted in in more places. I can't really be bothered. But we do think that we can get in all around it with it still on the car and put all of our new seals on in situ. So we're going to have a crack at that now. So we're going to have to go around one by one and take off all these manky dead old staples that are holding on this weird like fibrousy whatever this kind of matting is here and this rubber down the side. We've got these nice new seals that just came from Larry's T-Bird shop. And uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to pop all those on in their place. Ding dong, we were wrong. Uh, we did have to take this panel off, it turns out. This piece here, this seal, it turns out we actually can't get to with it still on. And we also noticed there were some staples on the very bottom inside corner, deep down inside the car, with his, I don't know what looks like, actually it looks like foam. Well, not anymore, but... <laughs> Looks like it was once foam, and we think actually that might be where one of our other seals goes. There's a seal that we haven't been able to work out where it fits, and it's nice and square, and it looks like it'll go on here. So that answers that question, and it does force us to do both sides off the car. Skip forward a couple of weeks when it's a little bit warmer outside and we've finished fitting all of the splash guard uh, seals onto the front and rear splash guards indoors. We did those on the live stream, so if you haven't already, do check those out because they are quite entertaining. Um, these are the original pieces we took off and some of them are rubber and they kind of bend just barely but they obviously crack pretty badly as they go. Some of them are actually quite fibrous when they dry out so it's not quite the same as this sort of more neoprene style material that goes on so hopefully this should last a little bit better but yeah it's a little bit odd. Now this one has two pieces that goes back on. There's a tiny little plate that fits in the gap under here and seals off the inside of the arch right next to the spring and then this goes all the way up to the outside edge of the fender and closes in the back edge roughly, he says when he gets it, there. So we'll get this one bolted in as well and then continue on fitting up a few more bits and probably try and get the calipers back on as well. So as we're adding painted bits back onto the car, we can add on our lovely, nice repainted bumper brackets. And these two go on in here. This one comes out to the very furthest edge, and there is another one which is incredibly heavy. Like this probably weighs three or four kilos as it is, which goes on down the line. Unfortunately, now I put these up against the car and look at it, I think we're going to have to take this shield back off because that's the bolt that needs to go through and the hole is here and that yeah that that doesn't work so we're gonna have to pull this off then put these back on and then refit it do the other side and we might offer the bumper back up just to see how far out we are because there is a third piece that needs to go on last up today before it gets dark we've mounted these ons up we need to add the last piece of the bumper support that hangs onto the edge here so it doesn't flop up and down this way and that is what these pieces that I showed you at the beginning of the episode actually hold on to or at least this one does this is the new one which I was pretty sure I'd taken some video of me making but it turns out I haven't or I've lost it one way or the other um, all I did was measure out for, uh, take some measurements from this lay it out on some nice thin uh, 0.8mm steel and then fold it up to, to match um, and then oval the holes out 
and it all seemed to work pretty easily. It was nice and simple, but we're not sure which side is which because neither of us can remember when we took this off. So Chris is going to pass the bumper in. I'm going to line it up to here and see where this bolt hole on the underside here comes to. Now, I think this is going to be... Actually, I'm not sure now. This sits in and... No, because that's at the top. The, uh, yeah, so it must be the new one on this side and the old one on the other side. And yep, that lines up nicely. So we're going to paint this one up fit the other side of the car and then attach this and that will probably be us done. So in the spirit of getting things back on the car, we're gonna put our calipers on at last. And we've got a couple of new bolts. These are 916 UNC threads. So a quick shout out to Basingstoke Bolt and Tool for helping me identify and source a couple of new bolts because the other ones are looking a little bit rusty. If you want to be ready for track day season, like we hope to have the Golf, check out shop.pedalbox.show because we've got long sleeve versions of our classic uh, logo t-shirt coming in very, very soon and they'll be available to buy shortly. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel as well. You can also support us on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show from as little as a dollar a month and any level of backing gets access to our Discord community where you can shoot the breeze with us, talk about your projects, talk about our projects. We got all these bits of rubber added on, everything's bolted back on, we did that on our live stream, then even got this old nasty bumper back on. Yeah, so it's an old nasty bumper because we've got a nice clean new shiny one, but we don't want to mark it up and everything with all our test fitting. But it has been really, really good to, f to get all of this stuff out of the garage and the shed and free up space. So hopefully we can start exploding the Mark II into it in the near future.